Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. We're back with a tactical analysis as one of the most highly anticipated Merseyside derbies in recent years took centre stage in the Premier League as Ancelotti's Everton hosted Klopp's Liverpool. The Toffees have started strongly, although this Liverpool side, wanting to get back to form after their humiliation versus Villa, were keen to do damage. In the end, the match ended 2 all thanks to goals by Calvert-Lewin and Michael Keane for the home side, while Salah and Mane netted for the Reds. The XG indicated Liverpool created the higher quality chances, 2.49 to 1.36, and the XG time map shows that they were dangerous throughout the 90. But what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. A quick reminder of the formations used by both sides, as seen on the OneFootball app. OneFootball will get you match updates, formation updates, as well as player and team stats, and so much more. And the best part is, you can get it absolutely free through the sponsored link in the description below. And if you want a detailed look at Ancelotti's Everton this season, check out this video, which will be linked in the description and at the end of this one. Let's start by looking at what Everton did in possession. When Pickford had the ball in hand or at a goal kick, Liverpool were often ready to press high with their front three. Most times, Everton didn't try to use intricate play to break this high press and were fairly risk averse, which is understandable when you have two forwards who are good in the air. So, Pickford usually opted to go long, attempting 32 long balls, which is double Adrian's. However, the forwards were often isolated and not able to knock it down and win the second ball with Richarlison winning no aerials and Calvert-Lewin just three, so often they lost possession when they did this. But at times, they got the ball higher up the pitch with the centre-backs and Liverpool did play a fairly high line, which Everton looked to exploit, much like Villa did, and often looked for the direct chip ball into the run of Calvert-Lewin, who often got between the centre-backs. But for the most part, Liverpool were able to cut off this route. And Everton's default build-up shape often used a single pivot in Allen, whilst Gomez and Decore ventured higher up the pitch. However, Firmino often played a more withdrawn role, cutting off any passes into Allen, and the rest of the midfield would push up to press Decore and Gomez, making central progression a lot harder. So, the midfield three didn't see much of the ball, with the 6th, 8th and 9th most touches for Everton. So Everton did try to adapt to this, with Gomez dropping deep to form the second pivot, whilst Ducouré would be the most advanced of the midfield three, trying to push the Liverpool midfield deeper. Meanwhile, Salah and Mane looked to press the centre-backs to allow Firmino to stay deeper, which did open up opportunities for Everton to try and find the full-backs. They could attempt the chip ball over the pressing man into the wide area. But the left was particularly effective, as when Salah came narrow, they would look for Gomez, who would then attempt the first time pass into Digne in the space, although Henderson often did look to cover this. From deep, Digne's main aim was then often to play Richarlison in, making runs down the line. Elements of this show in the Calvert-Lewin goal. Salah is pressing the centre-back, which frees up Digne to push right up the pitch, and this time, Hamas has moved across to receive the pass. He then plays in Digne on the overlap as Trent lets him run off him, and Digne then hangs up the cross for Calvert-Lewin to finish. And they also had a lot of creative success down the right-hand side. Coleman initially, and then Godfrey when he came on, were both keen to push up on the overlap, able to do so because Mane was also pressing central. On the left, Henderson was able to consistently move into the wide regions to cover, but on the right, Thiago tended to stay more central, opening up space for Hamas to move into the half space while the fullback looked to occupy Trent. From here, Hamas was able to cut in and look for the cross into the forwards, which led to a big chance. But another consistent pattern was the switch to Digne, who was free as Richarlison tucked in and in space he would look for the cross into the box, and he had three key passes and five attempted crosses. But what did Liverpool look to do in possession? 
They usually came through the first phase of play easily, as Everton pressed less, with a much higher passes per defensive action of 14, as they sat in more of a mid-block. And Everton's defensive shape did cause them problems. Hammers is not renowned for his defensive edge, so Ancelotti pushed him right up alongside Calvert-Lewin to reduce his workload. Ducure would then compensate, moving to the right, so the defensive shape was a 4-4-2. Liverpool then looked to dominate the central regions, and Firmino would drop into the midfield to create a 4 vs 2 in the centre of the pitch, and he often got onto the ball between the lines to play in the forwards who had also tucked in to increase the central numbers. On the right, this would often lose to Decore having to push in, meaning that they were light on the flanks, and time and again, Robertson got into good spaces to cross from these wide regions, with a game-high 8 crosses including corners. And on the right, the mechanism was slightly different. Richarlison was more disciplined in looking to track Trent into deeper regions and keep things 2 versus 2 here. Salah would often tug infield, drawing Dinier in, leaving a 1 versus 1 out wide. So, because Liverpool already had the numerical advantage in these central regions, Henderson was happy to move into the wide areas to be the extra man. If untracked, he was then happy to get on the ball in the wide regions to cross. We see some of this in the second goal. Salah has drawn Digne central, opening up space for Henderson to receive the ball wide, unmarked. Under no pressure, he looks for the cross and although it's intercepted, Salah finishes up the rebound. So often we saw Everton be dragged across the pitch to prevent the overload, which would mean to Kure, who was supposed to track Robertson was drawn central. So, Robertson often found himself in acres of space and Salah and Henderson, as well as Trent, were often responsible for the direct switches of play to Robertson, who would then be free as Mane dragged Coleman or Godfrey infield. We see this in the first goal. Henderson, as the extra man, has dragged Gomez out of position, so Ducure and Allen have to shift across to cover. Hamez is high upfield and Mane drags Coleman central. Salah switches it to Robertson and when Digne moves out to confront him, Mane is now free to make the run into the box and he applies the finish. Overall, the match was a good gauge for Ancelotti to assess what level they are at, and a point may not be the worst result in the long term for Liverpool. But what did you make of the match? I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, a like would go a long way to support the channel. And if you want to take that support a step further, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. There, you'll get rewards like early access to video, exclusive videos, and much more. And a huge shout out to Adam Lace, John Diggle, DXXX, Bruce, Mark Dammer, Jan Oku, and Abdullah Abdul Karim for recently joining the Ultra tier. But that's all for today, and remember, keep it simple. Mm -hmm.